morning. How are you doing? It's a bit of a funny question, isn't it, to ask somebody straight away. We say it all the time. Hi, how are you doing? We say it to people when we meet them. We write it in emails or letters or text messages. And what do you think the most common answer is uh, that people say when somebody says, Hi, how are you doing? They say, fine. They say fine or they say good. And sometimes people are actually fine. And other times they just don't really want to share. And sometimes they don't really know where to start on how they're actually feeling. You know, this week, I have to say, I have felt all sorts of emotions. I think I'd done all of these by the end of Monday. And I wanted to tell you the story about what had happened and how God came into that situation. So as I'm telling you the story, have a listen and see if you can spot the different emotions that I was feeling this week. So let's start with Monday. Monday was the start of the new week. We were homeschooling, we were working and it was really busy. But I did not know what I was going to talk to you about today. And so I prayed about it and I felt a bit more peaceful about that. Um, but I just I had no ideas about what to talk to you about and Steve had phoned me in the afternoon and we chatted about it a bit and I still really didn't have any idea about what to talk to you about and um, as the day went on I started to feel maybe a bit more worried about it um, but I thought don't worry tomorrow is another day I'll just sleep on it I'll wake up in the morning and I'll know what I'm going to do well can you remember what happened on Monday night Ah, uh, a storm hit. Now, I was putting the girls to bed and they felt quite nervous and quite scared by the big uh, rattles of thunder and lightning overhead. But I felt really excited. I really love storms. I love just like the power of the weather. And I just, it makes me think about how awesome and powerful God is. So I was feeling excited, but uh, the rest of the family weren't feeling too excited. So I went to bed and Tuesday I woke up and I just still had no ideas and I'm starting to panic now. And I'm feeling quite stressed. So um, I decided I'd pray again, I'd just try and stay calm and I decided to go out for a walk. And some strange things started to happen. So before I went, I was having a look at my phone and I watched this uh, incredible interview with the singer called Stormzy and he just won an award and he was explaining this amazing testimony that I'll share with you a little bit later on. So I watched that and then I went out for my walk and I listened to a song on um, my earphones called Cornerstone. And uh, and then when I was walking, it obviously started raining. Uh, so I had my brolly up and I came back and my girls were getting a snack and they got the bag of carrots out of the fridge. And I kid you not, Junior Church, they pulled this carrot out of the bag and it was in the shape of a lightning bolt. It was like this. I'd never seen anything like it before. And actually, it was at that point that I realised that God had actually been chatting to me the whole time. And I just had not been catching what he was saying because I was getting too worked up and too panicked about my situation. I started thinking about it. Now, there was a storm on the Monday night. Tuesday morning, I listened to an interview with Stormzy. I walked in the rain. I listened to a song called Cornerstone, where one of the lines is, through the storm, he is Lord, Lord of all. Then I come back in and there's a carrot shaped like a bolt of lightning. And I all of a sudden realized what I wanted to talk to you guys about today. No, that's not the right picture, hang on. Today, storms. <laughs> the emotional storms, it really got me thinking that God had been there the whole time. I was feeling like this, ah! But God had just been walking alongside me and chatting to me and telling me, but I just had not been catching what he'd said. And it made me think about the incredible power of prayer and how cool it is just to be able to talk to God. Let me tell you about the interview I saw with Stormzy this week as well, because it really fits into what we're talking about today. Now, Stormzy is a singer and he was playing the biggest concert that he'd ever played before at a festival called Glastonbury. 
Now he got onto the stage and he said at that point the sound pack, so everything, his little earphones that he wears that help him hear the music behind him, um, it just went off and he couldn't hear anything properly and he just he just felt really down and he felt like he'd messed up at the biggest concert that he'd ever done. He describes it as a nightmare and actually at that point he thought he'd blown it and his music career was over. Now I have to say I watched that concert on television and it did not come across like that at all. It was absolutely incredible and the newspapers the next day uh, reported a different thing as well. They said that it was stunning. Uh, it says, all hail Stormzy. They use words like glorious, triumphant, majestic, historic, powerful, electrifying. That's how they'd seen his performance that night. Now afterwards, Stormzy had spoken to his mum about it, about what had happened and how he'd felt. And she actually hadn't watched the performance because her pastor had had a vision. And in this vision, his whole set had gone wrong at Glastonbury. So uh, his mum, instead of watching the television, she took herself to church. And for the whole time that he was on stage, she stayed in church and she prayed. And Stormzy actually calls her a prayer warrior. She was praying so hard for him in that moment. And, um, and really the newspapers the next day report what happened. And uh, I love that. And in this interview, he says, you know, in my darkest times, God has always been there. What an amazing story that was and an incredible testimony to the power of prayer and praying for other people. It's just awesome. Now, we're told in the Bible that uh, we can chat to God anytime, anywhere, and that he's always ready to listen to us. And I thought today it would be pretty cool if we did a prayer experiment together, just to show you the power of prayer. Now, for this uh, experiment, you are going to be needing some things from your kitchen. So I would advise that you get a, a grown-up in your household to help you as well. So the first thing you are going to need is some bicarbonate of soda. Now, I've put this in this dish and I have to say that I don't mind if this dish gets dirty so please don't use your grown-ups best china because it might get a bit messy so put some bicarbonate of soda in a dish the next thing you're going to need is some vinegar so pour some vinegar into a couple of little cups and color them with a few drops of food coloring so you can see here I have got some red vinegar and I've also got some blue vinegar as well now you're also going to need something to uh, put the drops of vinegar on the plate with so you can either use a teaspoon or if you've got one of those little droppers they'll work really well and I've got uh, a couple of syringes that I'm not going to use again so I'm going to use these ones okay so here we go with the experiment now with our red food coloring uh, let we can do this together and um, think of somebody that you would like to pray for so get your bicarbonate of soda and I'll put it nice and close so you can see see so we're going to pray think of somebody that you want to pray for okay so maybe you want to say their name out loud maybe you want to say their name in your head and we're going to offer that person up to God and watch what happens when we pray our prayers. Are you ready? Woo! It's an explosion. Our fizzy prayers as we pray for that person. Woo! Now the next thing we're going to pray for is a situation and we're going to use our blue colouring for that one. So think of something that else that you would like prayer for. Maybe it's something that's going on with you at the moment or maybe it's uh, homeschooling, maybe you want to pray for somebody else or something. So think of that other thing that you would like to pray for. And we're gonna to pray together and I'm gonna fire the food coloring at the bicarbonate of soda and watch those powerful prayers go boom. Ready? Okay, off we go. Whee! There we go, there's our fizzy prayers. So you can try this at home if you want to, if you have the things. Otherwise, you can always just chat to God. That is just as powerful. Or if you want to, because it's been a very stormy time this week, you might want to get yourself a piece of lightning made out of paper and you could write your powerful prayers on that lightning and pray those to God this week. So have lots of fun and let me know how you get on. So remember, however you're feeling, 
uh, today, whether it's happy or sad or angry or frustrated or just plain silly, God is always ready to listen to you chatting to him. And just think about the awesome powerfulness of prayers. Uh, now, this week we have two worship songs just on that theme. So the first one is by a band called uh, Unspoken and the song is Reason. And the second song is all about chatting to God. It is Ask, Seek, Knock from Hillsong's Kids. Now, those songs can be found uh, on our Sunday Services online page if you want to head over now. Or if you're watching at a later date, they can be found on our YouTube playlist. So have a great week. And there is an amazing in old English proverb that says this. Actually, I better head outside to tell you. Come with me. So remember, life isn't about waiting for the storm to pass. <laughs> it's about learning to dance in the rain.